Hey guys, it's Sal, the intern from Professional Development. We're talking about episode 72 today about no regrets. As I'm regretting doing this intro. <laughs> not bad, honestly. Like I was expecting way worse and I was expecting not to be able to yeah, hear you. Yeah, you kind of spoke up for a second. Yeah. You're welcome. And you uh, get really you're welcome. reject Yeah, your voice so there. like Sal said, we're going to talk about regrets today. The power of regrets. We are going to talk quotes, books, podcasts, articles, some of our biggest regrets. Um, and yeah, should be a good one. Like I said, this is going to be the first of a separate thing that we're going to do, which this episode is dedicated just to the topic that we've chosen. So, uh, let's kick it off with regret, regret, regret. quotes. It's, uh, it's regrets. Bobby's week. No regrets. It's Bobby week. Bobby's week. Bobby, what do you got, dude? Yeah. So, uh, the quote that I have is, I, I have a few things from this guy, uh, Daniel Pink. He's the author of The Power of Regret and has a couple other books as well. And this, this quote is, the only people without regrets are people who have brain damage, people who are sociopaths, and people who have neurodegenerative diseases. The rest of us have regrets. And when we reckon with them properly, they can point the way forward. Um, I saw this guy speak at... Uh, at this Aflac event focus uh, back in early January. And after that bought his book and just now got around to reading it. Uh, so it's been, it's had a pretty big impact on me. And then especially with talking uh, with Mike Kitko last week and talking about things that you regret, I actually had a one-off conversation with him. So um, just made, made me realize uh, that there's a lot to look back on and uh, kind of move forward from. So that's my quote that I got. Very nice. Yeah. So I'll hop in. I've got one that uh, is make it a rule of life never to regret and never to look back. Regret is an appalling waste of energy. You can't build on it. It's only good for wallowing on it. And that is uh, from my girl, Catherine Mansfield, who was a New Zealand writer essayist, uh, lived from 1888 to 1923. In case you guys didn't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of disagree with her. So. I know. So, well. Too bad I can't argue with her. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Where's so she going, going off what, Bobby said, like, so I know I actually like this quote a lot, but in terms of regrets, like, I believe you do have regrets, but at some point they don't become regrets because whatever you f fucked up most in your life typically pointed you or led you to something that's a lot better. So that's my thing on it, which we'll talk a, a little bit more. But I, I did like that quote, even though Dan wants to try to fight a dead woman. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, I do think that regret, out of regret, to Bobby's quote, like, does come something good. You learned a lesson. That's why you have the regret. And then you can build on that. So that's, I think that's why I disagree. So my quote, um, so I have two, but I'll just go with this one. Never, <laughs> never regret something that once made you happy, right? Like you chose to do something um, and you enjoyed it at the time. And then it, you know, maybe it fucked up a relationship or it fucked up something, but um, how can you regret something that made you happy? Like, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. If it makes you Great happy. Great song. Classic. Who is that? Who sings it? Alanis Morissette, right, Rich? I think you're right. It can't be. What is it? No, maybe not. All right. Someone, one right. of those. If Sal was a good intern, he'd be <laughs> typing right that, now. That should be our intro music to this one. If it makes you happy. <laughs> <laughs> the other one I have is, and I'll talk more about this on this episode, is regret is mostly caused by not having done anything. And I think that, so I did a bunch of research and I'll talk about it more, like I said, but there's short-term regret and long-term regret. And I think the long-term regret is what really people hold on to. And, and typically that's from not having any, doing anything that they thought would be cool or that they thought they should do or, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I actually had three quotes, but I'll just go with this one. Yeah. You want up <laughs> Dan, let's go. <laughs> just flex. just right up, flex on Dan. Well, I, guys, I actually had five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't want to make him feel bad. I had seven. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but so my quote is, Google. you got to keep on keeping on. Life's a garden. Dig it. Dig it. Make yes. it work for you. And that's from the great Joe Dirt. So, Joe no, I, I just, I, I think that, like, I always, like, mm. reference that quote all the time. Because, like, people seem to, like, get down in the dumps about shit. And I'm just like, fucking Joe Dirt did it. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so, no, mine's not, like, a real serious one. But um, you guys, this were all great. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, Joe uh, Dirt, kinda, oh, kinda that's, that's awesome. Part <laughs> Jesus. Cheryl Crow. Yeah, Cheryl, Crow. Cheryl Crow. Nice. Fuck. Oh, sorry, Atlantis. All right, sorry. 
Is her name Atlantis? Or Atlantis. Atlantis. <laughs> Whatever. Her name is Cheryl. Yeah. Um, Who's pretty hot. But there's also, I saw something I like the most dangerous person is the person that like lives by it is what it is. Or, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Because it is, it is what it is. Yeah. You just move on. Fuck it. So, that being said, um, is there anything, well, I guess before <laughs> we actually hop into that, um, books, podcast suggestions, Bobby, you already talked on, obviously, anything in particular uh, that you guys would, if somebody's wanting to dive deeper into this subject, where you would push them? I mean, I would push them into the, like a, the journal of psychology <laughs> on regret and looking at the data. I think it's fascinating to, to look at that. And then, uh, like, I wanted to bring this up. Bobby brought up the World Regret Survey, which was interesting. Did you guys do that? I yeah, I, I did it. And I was like, what, it's over with already? And you know, then I, did, I, I yeah. did it, and then I clicked out of it because I was like, well, that was dumb. And then I realized you had to click a state. You had to hover over a state. Did yeah. you guys pick any of your favorites on that? I got a I got one. I regret Go marrying my second husband. He was an alcoholic, and I was warned. <laughs> <laughs> I and have, the fact uh, that they actually like filled it out. <laughs> yeah, there's there are some really good ones on here. I had one uh, female age forty six. I regret that I wasn't strong enough to leave after seeing an email exchange that my boyfriend at the time was cheating on me. Years later, we got married, and I continued to experience the same situation. I am still married today, and I regret not walking away when I had the chance. So she still has the chance. Yeah, yeah. she still hasn't fucking done it. She oh. realized the regret and is still regretting it. <laughs> See, that's where it becomes bad, right? Yeah, that's where that's the, the regret is not serving you. So I found a funny one. Uh, it was, oh, where it is. Um, did not take the opportunity to go to Ireland with uh, a friend the summer I was governess of New York City. I was too responsible to leave the family I was caring for, flex, and, and, <laughs> lost, and lost out on what may have been the trip of my lifetime. I wish I had come with you, Betty! <laughs> like six exclamation points. And this, this chick is 68 years old writing this. <laughs> they were all old. They were, everybody was like in their 60s. I had one... Uh, Buying a Tim Hortons franchise. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if oh, it was wait, from was St. Louis. It, was the regret not? It was actually no, it was buying a one. State. It was, it was, it was buying the fact one that they or not buying it, one. Or they didn't buying buy it. A, buying, buying one. Buying was the <laughs> oh, damn. I, there was another one that I had that was, I mean, it, this is probably going to parlay into a lot of other stuff that we'll talk about, but this guy, 67 years old, did not risk starting my own electrical contracting business after I left the electrical contracting company I worked for. So a lot of, I mean, there was a lot of similarities in some of these regrets. Some of them were, some of them were funny. Some of fucking yeah. should have gone on that trip with Betty. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was cool to see that. So I was glad that you guys poked around on there because uh, it was, it was pretty eye opening. I think that's a really good place for a lot of people to get some information from so they can see what other people are wishing they would have done. Different. I actually thought it was a cool database. Like he could have really built that out yeah. and like made it a platform of, of regrets for people to like read through. And you can look all over the but world all too. Like, like even though yeah. the United States was uh like highlighted on there, you could click on all the other countries, countries. and see if there were similar ones or yeah, I mean, in some countries where you would expect there not a lot to be going on, um they have some regrets too. So, so what did you guys fill out for your regret? Man, I went pretty personal with mine. Um me personally, uh my biggest regret was just I, I knew that I was an alcoholic since 2014. Um, I remember because I went to go talk to someone about it. Um, and I don't think I've ever told many people that. Um, so a little insight into me. I, I went to go talk to a counselor in 2014. And the guy told me that if I don't get a better relationship with alcohol or I cut off my relationship with alcohol, that I'll always have trouble holding down relationships, whether those are business, um, personal, family, friendships, et cetera. And uh, I, I think I built some good friendships in that time. However, I know there's a lot that fell off. Um, and there's a lot of things that I've done that in the time where I was drinking and partying way too hard that I that I do regret, but I'm working on getting better from. So that was that was my big regret yeah. that I wrote down. Well, you, Brad. Thanks for sharing that, Bobby. Yeah, dude. Appreciate that. Um, So the one I put down is like, I actually think about this all the time. So you guys know I raced. I traveled all over the country, right? But I was like, I was tied to it. Like I couldn't, I didn't go to the lake. I didn't go. Wait, wait, wait. Were you about to say you were married to the game? You no, said, no. Just oh. like. Is it a flex? No. But you don't mind. It was, 
it was just like I was I was always on the road. So like when somebody'd be like, Oh, do you want to go to the lake? I'm like, dude, I've you know, I I can't. You yeah. know, like I couldn't go do all those things. So the the like I always said if I was to redo life all over, I would be that guy that like threw a backpack on and just traveled the fucking world for like two years. Just went absolutely everywhere, which I got to go a lot of cool places, but it was a totally different vibe. Like I wanted to live that life like I'm sleeping in a hostel in fucking Amsterdam or whatever. So that's what I put down for mine that I didn't travel independently at a younger age. And like, I literally will probably tell my kids that like they should just do that for a year. Just go, go see the world on your own and make your own assumptions of what life is. Damn, I was not That's expecting cool. that from you. Yeah, yeah, something different. That's awesome. I put, I just, well, I wanted to get through the survey because it was like, <laughs> so you I, thought just, it was I wrote be long. the word relationships. And, and so I think for me, I can be nostalgic, but I'm not super regretful. But what I do understand about life is everything is temporary, which is fucked up to think about. Like there will be a last time that you and I have a conversation, a last time you and I have a conversation. And like, there'll be a last time that we step foot in this room and do a podcast. Like it's just inevitable that everything in life is temporary. And so relationships that you get over time, like how much, uh, you know, could you have made those more like higher quality, I guess. And, and, and so for me, I guess I just wrote relationships because everything in life is so like finite and there's always that last time, but you don't, sometimes you don't even realize when the last time is going to be, especially when you leave high school and you know what I mean? Like yeah. that last day of school, it's like, we're never all going to be in the same fucking building. And the last game you played in sports, it's like, we're never going to be this, yeah. we're, this team will never be assembled ever again, perfectly with the same people on this fucking team ever again. And like those little things really fuck me up. Like to think about like, there will always be a last, there'll be a last day that I operate my mm. business. There'll be a last day I, uh, the one that fucks me up is there would be a last day that you actually hold your child, you know? And so like I wrote relationships because when you look back and I don't know if it's a regret, but it, it's definitely a nostalgic thing where it's like, I could have put more like of myself into those relationships and so and more quality out of those. So is there one that stands out that like <clears throat> triggered you to actually write relationships no i think it's i think it's all of it because i like i i really think it's it, it's interesting you know i go through the circles of friends that i've had and and you know what i mean like i had a good time here and i had a good time there and but there was there's was never one i mean again i was just trying to get through the fucking I, I honestly feel like that's the deepest answer dan's ever gave that, it wasn't I, associated okay. with finances that's, those are <laughs> those are two uh, brad you you fucking basically just said i want my kids to uh become liberals and just <laughs> float around and, be, and create GoFundMe accounts so they can travel the world and everybody no but all seriousness like both of yours were definitely not exactly what I was expecting so uh, I got the I got the chills when Dan was talking about his stuff because I I saw this I, get, I saw this post on Instagram and he was talking to this guy who asked him how old his parents were and um, how like how long do you think they're going to live for right and I think they were like 80 years old and you know you can probably say like all right they'll probably live like another five years or something like that and he asked him well how many times do you see your parents a year and they lived on opposite side of the sides of the country he's like two times a year and he's like you don't have five years left with your parents you have 10 times left with your parents mm -hmm. and to dan's point there like you don't know when the last time this is going to be so it's like you want to treasure those moments but then also like the time that you have left with people you could just see it as individual meetings that you have left with that person. And uh, I don't know, whenever Dan was talking, I straight up had goosebumps because it made me think about that. And it, I it saw is that true. One. Everything's, yeah, those relationships are, they're for sure temporary. So some definitely uh, some goosebump stuff there. Yeah, that's, uh, so I think about that a lot, actually. Like, it's like one of the, like, I'm like very heartless, but it's one of the things I do think about a lot. Like, I see my, I see my dad every single day almost. He's like my best friend. And like, I think about, like, I'm already like trying to like anticipate like when that's not going to be there anymore. So like, it's a super weird thing, but it's like Dan said, like there, there will be a last time for everything. So it's like, I'm trying to, like, I, I think I wrote in my goal sheet this year is like, I want to make sure to like go on a trip with just my, either my mom or my dad. Because like, those are things that like, you're going to look back on and be like, why didn't I just like take that week to go do something one-on-one -on -one with that person? Yeah. Yeah. 
What about you? Uh, so <laughs> you, you dodging? I, no, I wanted to get. I know. I also wanted to get through it, so I I wrote uh, not going to Panama City that last year. That sixth year I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, right, Van Wilder. So, well, I um, damn dude, life regrets. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to. I just wanted to see what they were. So I was just like, oh, this will be funny, which is going to be hilarious if somebody hovers over Missouri. <laughs> yeah. They're just like not going to PCB that sixth year. <laughs> um. But so this was a, a difficult one for me because it, it's like one of the most difficult questions because I, right now, especially like where I am right now, it's like, I don't have a lot of regrets. I've got a lot of fuck ups that at the time when I fucked up, like big time regretted. And I was like, thought my life was over or thought it was the end of the world. Um, but again, like I said, every single one of them has pointed me to a good direction or put me in a good place because of it. Uh, so while we were thinking about it, I said, if, if I had to pick one, right now that sticks out, it's not house hacking at age 24. So like right when I graduated college, like getting 3.5% down, putting a down payment on the place, have roommates move in, and then just accumulating a property a year at of like 5% down or whatever it is. Because it's like, if I hadn't done that, it'd be, you know, 10 places. And if you, you can leverage all that, every, you know, all the equity that you have in those into bigger and better things, apartment complexes, storage units, whatever. So right now, that's probably the biggest thing that sticks out for me. So that's an inaction regret. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it'd be, yes, an inaction for sure. So are you, can we move? To yeah. the next? So <clears throat> I was doing some research and it looks like there's three theories of regret. And one is temporal theory. I don't even know if I'm fucking reading that right. Where it suggests that lifespan changes in regret intensity are driven by the nature of the regrettable decision itself. Actions produce greater regret in the short term, whereas inactions generate more regret in the long term. Mm -hmm. So, like, I could, you know, do something stupid and crash my car and be like, fuck, dude, yeah. you know, but that's a short term regret because you're going to get another fucking car, you know. Uh, whereas if you didn't, if you were, you regret buying, not buying more properties, you know. So, I think that's along that line. It is. And, well, and going off that, it's the, the not, the non action or whatever you were talking about. That's why that website is full of like, you know, 60 to 70 plus year old people that are sitting there on the internet and they're like, you know, obviously thinking about at some point I'm going to die. Okay, what? Probably sooner than later, right? I mean, yeah. Realistically. So <laughs> what didn't I do that I could have done? I think the older you get, you have a lot more of those. I mean, just automatically, right? Yeah. And then the second one is decision justification theory, which is we feel more regret over decisions whose outcomes compare poorly to those of options foregone, right? So going back to opportunity cost, fear of missing out, you know, th basically you're like, fuck, dude, I did this and I should have done that, right? Like, or somebody bought, I should have bought Bitcoin, you know what I mean? Like, but instead I bought Ethereum or something. And so that's like a decision. And then you start to justify uh, if it's a bad decision, you know, you start making justifications. And then the third one is, the theory, uh, belonging theory of regret. So it's uh, making decisions that hurts your social belonging within whatever group you're in. So like in high school, you chose to fucking do beer bongs and you blacked out and ended up in the hospital. <laughs> fucking, you know, you know, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, those are the three theories. Nice. I want to get through those real quick. Yeah, yeah. So going off of those three, um, one of the questions that Bobby has written up here what are some of the biggest regrets? Like, okay, and we talked about ours. What are some of the biggest regrets within any one of those categories that you see are most common for other people? Relationships. Talks, Sal. Relationships. What about relationships? So, like, let's say, well, for me, example, like, I'm usually the guy who, like, don't build up the courage to say something. So, I usually, like, wait it out. And there's a few um, girls that I've talked to where it's just, like, we haven't talked ever since. And I was like, fuck, I should have said something. So I learned from that where like, if I meet someone now, I'll be like, hey, just be straightforward with them. If, if they like me or not, cool. If they don't, all right, move on. Always know? wondering what if. Yeah. Right? So the that would be is. like an inaction. Like you haven't taken any action. That's your regret. True. For relationships. Yeah, not asking the girl out. Not saying hi when you see her out, right? Stuff like that. That's, that's a regret. Uh... Not asking her out, I yeah. guess. I mean, for me, it's not really introducing yourself and and just seeing if it could have something could have been there. Yeah, but I've, for me, I think it's like I'm more like be put in the friend zone more. Like me not having the courage is like, hey, like 
ask her out. Oh, okay. So you can go say hi. Yeah. It's just, you, you're just too big of a pussy to ask him out. <laughs> Sure. You put yourself in the <laughs> so that well, that's one of the like, like, and to Dan's point too, with those different categories of regret or whatever that was, but um, like it's a connection type regret, right? Where you fear you experience this sense of loss, even though like they're still in your life, but you like you don't have a particular like relationship with any of these girls outside of a friendship. So you're like, I wish I'd be more bold and see if these chicks want to go out. Maybe they just can't hear you. That's a really good yeah. possibility. So do you, do you like <laughs> on, on your drive home from uh -huh. the podcast? Do you regret like not saying more sometimes? Actually, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of regrets. So, so to that question, I mean, it, the research that I did, it looked like ninety percent of the people who are on their deathbed regret inaction things. Yeah. Spending more time with their parents, spending more time with their kids, not starting that business, not following their dreams, not taking that trip, whatever that is, it seems like that is really what holds, and, and that's that long-term versus short-term regret, yeah. where it's like when you're on your deathbed, you definitely are regretting, fuck, dude, life is up. Yeah. I should have done all those things I thought about doing. And I think that I, you, your quote talked about people with no regrets, right? Like how that's bad. Is that what you said? Something uh, he or was, was that a, Live with no regrets. Mine yeah. was because because uh, well, what I was regret it if it make you happy. If it yeah, because like I I think I will be that guy that's like overall. I think I'll be sitting on my deathbed and I'll be I'll look back and I I don't think I will have very many regrets because a lot of the things I want to do I I just do and if it sucks or I'm fucked up from it I look at it like you guys say and and I learned something from it and it built me into a better person. I don't think I'll ever have like a long term regret. I think I probably have a lot of short-term regrets so that's and that's the thing when when it talks about like the like you can wallow in a regret it's like not like you're literally when we talk about like that book i was reading um the eckhart tolle book uh you know and being present minded or whatever if you're wallowing on a regret then you're literally letting that ruin a moment for you right now yeah. so not only are you saying that like okay i'm out of control of like if i can enjoy this time right now because i'm pissed off about what i did in the past but it's also saying like this because of something that I did, my life will never be as good as it could have been. Yeah, and it's like not true whatsoever. And it's like I don't like the idea of thinking of that control. We're all very growth minded. It's like I don't care how bad you. F I don't say I want to say there's nothing you can do to fuck it up, but it's like we are all in the ninety nine percent of the people that we know. No matter how bad you fuck up, you can your life can become significantly better. You can yeah. still live the best possible and, life. And Brad, I think that like what's crazy about regret is that sometimes, uh, first off, I don't think anybody can get away from either short-term or long-term regrets. Like you can be thankful for the life that you've had, yeah. but there's always going to be something in my opinion, because sometimes you don't even realize that you'll regret something that you didn't do until later in life. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you may say, fuck dude, I had a great racing career and then I, I hung it up. But what if I would have, you know what I mean? Like maybe you're 80 years old and you miss it at that point. Maybe you don't yeah. miss it today, but maybe you miss it then. And then, so regret can come at a later time. And and right now you don't have the regret, but it just, it kind of. So the back. way I look at that is like, I always tell people like, you know, like what ifs? Like, well, what if your grandma had balls? She'd be a grandpa. Like you don't know. So why what even if like, I was, like, what if <laughs> I ended yeah, up you as know, a like, chick? What if your grandma had balls? She'd. Be your grandpa. So, like, to me, it's like you or never know what a what if is. So that's why I, that's, I guess, the, my mindset about that. Like, I'm not going to sit and be like, well, what if this happened? Well, it it didn't. It just right. didn't happen. I think I that, just, that's where I maybe think a little bit different. But I do see exactly what you're saying. And when I'm fucking 100 years old, lay on my deathbed, I'll probably mm -hmm. tell you I have a regret. Yeah. And then I also read this one thing is, so there's our actual selves, our ought selves, and our ideal selves. Our ought selves are, this is who we ought to be. We ought, like, I should wake up. I should go to the fucking gym, you know? And if you're keeping those, if you're doing those on a daily basis, like, you don't have any regrets. Like, fuck, I skipped the gym. I feel like shit. Or I ate McDonald's. I feel like shit, whatever, right? And then there's our ideal selves. And these are the traits, abilities, and accomplishments we would like to possess or our goals, basically, right? We want to reach our goals. And you hear Ed Milet talk about this. Like, when he dies, he he's going to be at the gates of heaven and he's going to get to meet the person he could have become. And his yeah. whole goal in life is to be as close to that perfect version of himself as he could get and i think there's a lot of people that think that way who are high performers and so yeah. um that's one way to like have that growth mindset and not it 
be all around finances or yeah, yeah. whatever, you know. Sure. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So, um, what do we have? What else do we have here? So, what, I actually, I, I know Dan's talked about that before, like, you know, like Ed Milet saying, like, the perfect version of yourself. And I actually think that's, like, super interesting to think about. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I probably actually never really thought about that. Like, but if you really do sit here and think about, like, what would the perfect version of yourself be? Would we all be the same? Or would we all be... Dude, I, like, I, I, I honestly... I, this is fucked up to say. I mean, this, is, you, this may sound a little far-fetched, but I think that with the right mindset and the, like, no, with limited fear and things like that, like, you could become the president of the United States. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you could literally have the influence. You could get up on stage. You could influence. You could do all those things if you really wanted to. Um, and Ed Milet had this, he, he had this guy on the podcast, and there was a exercise in the, in the book. And I remember this podcast. It's been a couple of years since I listened to it. But basically, you come up with some fictitious name, like, Superman, you know, and then you that's come up fit. with that's real. You, you come up with another fictitious name like shithead, right? And that's the worst version of yourself. And then the other side, Superman is the best version of yourself. And so you write down when I am working out every day, I am the best version of myself. And when I eat fucking Sour Patch Kids, I'm the worst version of myself. And so basically, you list out who you are when you're at the worst version of yourself and who is the fucking perfect version of yourself and then your daily you know and then you start building your goals and how do i create those habits to be superman not shithead or whatever it is so yeah so but your question was you're saying if we're listing this out would we be different would be would we be the same i think every one of us is going to have like a different better version no matter how highly we think of ourselves there's always different areas that we can be better at and i'm all for that right like i set i've like done the dr jason selk like uh, mission statement or vision statement or a vision of self-image is what actually his is. So it's like five years from now, what exactly do you see? Play that in your head. I've done that. Um, and I love that idea. I think it's a powerful tool if you're going to manifest, obviously coupled with action. But I'm also I'm also of the mindset, because uh, I've done this for years, <laughs> where it's like this back and forth of like crack the whip, procrastination, crack the whip, procrastination, 75 hard, fucking McDonald's, 30 beers and a bag of Sour Patch Kids, right? <laughs> like, so it's more about, I think it's part of it is just like understanding what you want and then why you want it is the important piece, right? And then, um, but I, I'm probably getting off a little well, bit Well, no, here. I agree with you. Like, there's an ideal version of yourself. Like, there's a version of yourself that you look up and they're on top of a fucking mountain, right? But let's say you get halfway up that mountain. Well, now you're feeling pretty comfortable because you're better than you were at the bottom of the mountain, right? Yeah. And so... Instead of chasing that person, you kind of, it's the thermometer thing. Yeah. At and the end it, of the day. And it is something, like I said, I, I, I talked about this before. My Kiko talked about it where it's like, we can be happy with all the things, like the aspirations we have of like the the jets, the boats, the all that stuff. But those things, you know, when we talk about it a lot, those things aren't going to make us happy, right? Like you're either a happy person or you're not. They have the power to influence our happiness. But if you're a miserable fucking cunt, like to begin <laughs> Whoa. with. Whoa. Am I not allowed to say nice. that? Is that the word we're not allowed to say here? I think I it think, might be. Nah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> you can go for it. Okay. So if you're <laughs> a miserable C word um, <laughs> and you get and you get all the shit in the world, like it's not there's an internal game that needs to be changed. And some people are already on the internal, like the internal game's already there. And so when they manifest the stuff, it just makes their life better, happier, more fulfilling, whatever. But it's I think the the things don't make us happy and fulfilled. It's uh that comes from internally, and then that helps us get those things. So I agree with that to a degree, but I also think that, like, if I look at life, I kind of look at it as a video game, right? Like, for me, getting something, you're right. The, that thing won't make me happy, but achieving the thing is like a level, you know? <laughs> and then I get to go to the next level, and then I get to go to the next yeah. level. So it's not, yeah, the thing will make me happy for fucking 24 hours. Yeah. Cool, I got a fucking 911 Turbo S, and I went fucking 180 and that was cool. I'm going to park it in my garage and, you know, but I did it. I got it. I fucking yeah. got it. You know, that's cool. But for me, it's it's a level game, yep. right? Like I got I, there and, and now how do I level that up, yep. right? And I've been thinking about this a lot and I'm not trying, I'm really not trying to flex, Matt. So <laughs> don't fucking call me out on this, but I'm looking at it like, okay, I have, I, I have, uh, I just got my lake house and I've always, Flex. I wanted a fucking lake house for a long time, right? And I have my house. And my house isn't bad. It's decent. Um, 
I mean, it isn't Jeffco. It, it is. <laughs> it, is in, it is in the pinnacle of Jeffco. Let's, let's be real. No, but at the end of the day, it's it's okay. Well, that's just a level, right? Like now, where's the lake house with the peninsula and yeah. the fucking instead of the you know eighty thousand dollar boat, where's the six hundred thousand dollar boat? And then instead of the house that I have, where's the house with the acreage with the pole barn yep. that I can put my sh- like. You know yeah, what I mean? So, I'm well, just saying have, it's a level game yeah, for me. I have the same mindset as Dan on this one because literally I just had this conversation last week with my wife. I'm like, if I win this contract, I'm buying myself a new Rolex. And she's like, why? You already, like, you have a Rolex. And I'm like, it, just because. Like, it's because every time I see that, I'll know that that was a transition. Like, where the business took another step towards, like, long-term wealth. And she was just like, I don't get it. And I'm like, well, for me, I do. Every time I put it on, I'll think of that that exact moment that, earn me this. Yeah. So again, I think we're all talking about the same thing, but different. Like what you guys are talking about, you're not attached to having a Rolex. You're attached to the level it puts you at because it's fulfilling to grow your company and be at a certain whatever. Right. It's a personal scoreboard for me. Like I'm not trying to scoreboard other people. I'm trying to say, (coughs) this is my personal scoreboard and you know, I've achieved this. So what's next to achieve? I guess that makes sense. Sure. So, but I, I like, cause I think Mike Kiko was talking about that in that, in that conversation where, you know, um, get all this shit and you think it's going to make you happy. He said something along the lines of that. I don't remember all of it, mm-hmm. but I think that's what you're stemming from. Similar. Yeah. 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 Similar conversation. So that's talked a good amount about that. Uh, anything else on regrets before we close out? Did we have an OnlyFans question inquiry? Uh, we didn't have any questions. We just had a couple people that had commented because uh, we'd had <laughs> we had a couple uh, questions out there asking people what they regret. Um, some of those <laughs> one came in this afternoon and said, "Not going on bachelor parties, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not launching my business sooner." I'm 30. Wish I would have started in my early 20s. Uh, there was another one that said, "Wish he would have par- started uh, stop partying sooner than he did um, and start taking life a little bit more seriously." And then I can't remember what the <laughs> other one was. But why are you pointing at me right now, Dan? Well, I, I was going to say there was a good question that Bobby had on the outline, and that was, "What advice would you have for someone who has regrets?" Yeah, yeah, we can go, definitely go into that. I just didn't know where you were. No, I, yeah, I'll, I mean, ju- I'll jump in real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I think you look at all these people who are, you know, like we, we saw on the survey that were old and they had regrets. But then you also look at Colonel fucking Sanders didn't start KFC till he was like 70 years old. So I think there's always an opportunity to go back and do those things. Like for me, like I wish I would have traveled independently at a young age. Well, maybe I work my ass off and I'm 50. I'll just take a year off and just go do whatever I want. Like I feel like there's always an opportunity to go back and remedy the regret you may have. Yeah. I mean, I know that's not always true. There's probably some shit where, you know, somebody killed somebody and they can't go back and change that. And you can't get out that, of jail. Yeah, they're going to have that regret <laughs> the rest of their life. Yeah. yeah uh, Use it. Use the regret you have now as a catalyst for what you want to do going forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I had focus on what you can control, which is the future, which is the present and the future, right? Like, I don't think that... What advice do you have to someone who has regrets? I think we all have some regrets, whether it's short-term or long-term. But focusing on... Just focusing on regrets is going to lead to depression, in my opinion, because you're focused on the past where, yeah. you know, control what you can control, move on, learn from that regret, and then that should position you to not have to regret the same shit over and over. Yep. Yeah, so I had uh, I had one here where, uh, like, it came straight from Daniel Pink's book, The Power of Regret. It's kind of a three-step process here. Um, first, admitting the regret, uh, just owning up to it, um, and it's kind of has, they said it has some therapeutic benefits, actually, and uh, they did some research studies that show that when people disclose things about themselves um, that they don't like, that they regret, while having their brain scanned, that areas of the brain that respond to rewards are activated. So while they're saying things that are not that they're not proud of and that they regret, they're actually, it's actually doing something good for their brain and activating those different senses. Um, so that's the first thing, admitting that regret. Second, self-compassion. Um, so just normalizing whatever it is that you did and making that okay. So that way in your head, it's like, okay, don't, like you said, don't wallow in this. If you have a lot of like self-pity and stuff like that, then you're never going to improve on anything. So have some self-compassion. Um, and then lastly, it's it's kind of a weird one, but it said self-distancing through speech is that third step. So speaking about yourself, your regret, and the pain it's caused in the third person can be an effective tool for changing 
getting your perspective on the matter. And the quote I have from that is, when you can view the problem from a detached point of view, seeing the solution becomes easier. And to me, whenever I saw that, it just, it made sense of, like, think of a time that a buddy has come to you with, they have problems about their relationship or their marriage or their business and stuff like that. And it's so easy to have that outsider's point of view and give them a, some a piece of advice that they're like, yeah, well, why wouldn't you just do this? It's so much harder as that individual person. So if we can start seeing ourselves from that outside, like outsider point of view, I think it'll be easier to um, come up with some solutions to things. For sure. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's a good way. You got something else? No, I was just laughing at you. You're like, yeah. <laughs> Can we that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's a good way to end it. Uh, just a reminder, guys, we have our next event coming up uh, the Bros and Business event, April 13th. It's going to be from 6 30 to 9 30. Uh, looks like we're going to be doing it at D1 West. Uh, we will be able to get you guys the link to sign up for that. I think we're going to do an event, right? something on Facebook. There's going to be a lot of different ways to sign up for it. Uh, if you're coming out, feel free to invite whoever. Just make sure they sign up because I think spots are going to be limited at this one. And then if you know of anybody who wants to speak at this, uh, we still have an open spot for a speaker. Otherwise, uh, we appreciate you guys listening and we will see you next week. Later. Deuces. Peace.